Okay, so uh, a few days ago, a new method of doing barrier skip was found to work in both the Wind Waker and the Wind Waker HD. Uh, this method is going to be faster for speedruns of the original game, but probably not for the HD game. So uh, this video is going to demonstrate a setup that we can use to make the barrier skip work consistently. Uh, it is somewhat of a complicated setup, as you're seeing right here, but um, this method requires us to be in a very specific position, have a very specific angle, and drop a bomb behind us on a very specific frame of Link's animation. Uh, so that's why we're doing all this stuff right here to set it up. But uh, once we get everything set up for it, uh, we just drop a bomb behind us and Link gets pushed through the barrier, essentially, uh, because the displacement that happens when the bomb is dropped on top of Link is enough displacement to successfully clip us past the barrier here. Alright, so for the setup explanation here, uh, I'm going to be on a dolphin emulator so that we can have this nice positional data view in the top left, and so that I can make save states as I go along and explain uh, the different nuances that go into this setup, because it is quite complicated, uh, at least right now. Hopefully it'll be much simpler in the future, but this is what we have, so uh, for now we'll just do it like this. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to get damage cancel. Uh, basically, if we get damaged by the knockback barrier, and then we pull out the Wind Waker on the very last frame that we have damage admissibility, then we will cancel the knockback. Sometimes it unfortunately takes a while to do here. Alright, there we go. So now that we're actually inside the damage barrier, uh, we want to go over to this wall right here, and we want to target the wall, so, you know, uh, make sure our facing angle is this way, and get as far into this corner right here as we can. Uh, we want to make sure that the camera is uh, roughly this far away from Link. Uh, so if you, like, have the free cam out here, and then you target from here, the camera is going to be farther away from Link, in which case this part of the setup's not going to work. So. To get the camera close to Link, just go into first person and then retarget, and now the camera is uh, where it should be. Okay, so from this position, uh, we're going to, while still holding target, we're going to pause. We're going to let go of target, and we're instead going to hold up on the control stick and right on the C stick. And so we want to hold these specific inputs for exactly three frames. Uh, so we're essentially going to just pause buffer three frames uh, to achieve that here. So that was one, that was two, and that was three. All right, so now uh, we've shifted Link's angle slightly, which is what we want, and we want to go into first person again. So to get to first person from this free cam state, we can just very lightly tap the L button, and that'll get rid of the free cam mode so we can go into first person again. Uh, from here, we're going to want to pause again, and then we're going to want to hold left on the control stick so that uh, we can get our angle to be exactly uh, 32,052 from right here. Uh, and so if we just go around like this, um, we'll notice that on this frame specifically, my angle is now 32,052. And the way to know that we got this angle uh, I'll go through frame advance here so we can easily see it, uh, is if during your unpause, or like between your pauses, you see this, uh, like this slightly darker gray on the left side of the screen. Uh, it's pretty easy to notice compared to the other frames around it, uh, because we're shifting our angle by quite a lot throughout uh, all of these frames. Uh, the good thing about this part of the setup is that if you uh, go too far, uh, like, let's say you pause buffer one frame too far, you can actually just pause buffer holding uh, the opposite direction, control stick right for a frame to get back to where you need to go. Because uh, holding left and right in first person for one frame goes the exact same distance. Uh, so, you know, just keep on making your corrections until uh, you see that the camera finally settles into uh, this position right here, where we can see that this, like, stone block is like on the left side of the screen here. The frames around it are very easy to realize that it's not this frame. 
And then from right here, we want to just uh, hold L to target and get out of first person. Uh, we want to go to the roughly center of the barrier right here. And now we need to dry roll about 15 times. Uh, if you notice my X position, uh, the X position is slowly, uh, okay, so the X position slowly shifts while you're dry rolling into the center here to 24.599. Uh, the next four digits aren't going to stabilize, but that's fine. That's not what we need. Uh, when we're doing these dry rolls, we uh, want to make sure that they're not connected uh, because if they're connected or if you roll too fast, then... Link is going to gain more speed on the rolls than he should, and he won't ease into this position. So again, when, when you're dry rolling, make sure that there's just a little bit of time before each roll. And typically, uh, you want to do like 15 rolls uh, if you're like, you know, if you can't actually see where Link's position is, because obviously you can't really do that on a console right now. Um, but yeah, roughly 15 to be sure. If you want to be like really safe, you can do like 20 or 25 or something like that. Uh, but now that we have this exact position, uh, we can take out the Wind Waker to just turn around. And then we can blow ourselves backwards with the leaf once. And this will put us in the position that we need for the clip to work, which is an X position of 24.68 and a Z position of negative 12,086.73. Now that we're in this position, we need to get the actual angle that we'll use for the clip. Uh, so this is the exact same leniency that it would be on Wind Waker HD. Uh, it's a little harder to line up though because there's not as good uh, resolution for this game as there is for uh, the original. So the visual cue that we're going to use here, uh, if we follow my mouse, is you'll notice that there's this like black like square. I think it's supposed to be like a window uh, on the bottom right of the screen here. We want the bottom right tip of the black square right here to just touch the left side of the screen. So if I move over like this, uh, basically you want it to be just slightly on there. Uh, that's a little too much. Like this, all right, yeah, so this is good. Uh, this gives us an angle that'll work because right now our facing angle is 33,497. Uh, the any angle between 33,488 and 33,503 uh, will work for this. So you have 16 individual angles that you can use to make this clip work. Okay, now that we've got this angle, um, you want to press B to get out of first person mode. Uh, don't target at any point right here, because uh, if you target, you might accidentally retarget uh, the walls that make up the barrier on uh, the left side of Link. So uh, from here, you're going to want to pull the free cam all the way back. Uh, at this point, what needs to happen is Link needs to pull out a bomb. And at a very specific frame of Link's like swaying animation with the bomb, uh, he needs to drop it behind him. It's so, like if we see here, we pull out a bomb, Link like sways side to side very subtly. Uh, we need to drop the bomb on a very specific frame of that animation for this clip to work. Uh, so the way that we're going to time this essentially is we're going to uh, first press uh, the button that has our bombs on it and start at the same time. So if I press start and my bombs button at the same time and then unpause again, you'll notice that Link takes out the bomb. Uh, so what we're going to do here is, after doing that, we're going to hold uh, right on the C-stick, and then this will spin the camera around consistently, and when we hit a specific view with the camera, we'll know that uh, we've gotten to the correct frame that we want to use. Okay, so we're going to, once again, pause and uh, pull out our bombs on uh, the button that has our bombs, and... After we do that, we're going to hold C-Stick right. The camera is going to begin spinning around, and we want to pause buffer to the frame where we can see uh, the tree on the other side of the barrier appear on the upper left-hand side of the screen right there, right? So I'm going to make a save state right here. Uh, so if we 
If I go through frame advance and I unpause the game right now, you'll notice that on the very top left of the screen is uh, this tree right here. And when you see this tree on the top left, this is the correct frame to pause buffer to for this. Uh, the frame beforehand, like it'll be completely off uh, the emulator screen and the frame uh, afterward, like there will be like a huge, the tree will be like more over here ish. So make sure you see the tree right there for the correct frame. Uh, and then uh, once we buffer to this frame, we need to unpause and then press B on the first frame that we possibly can to drop the bomb behind us. Uh, okay, and that was one frame late. Uh, if we're late, Link's gonna just scoot over to the right. But if we're on the correct frame, Link will get pushed forward, and now we are through the barrier. Uh, if, like, you know, you press B and, like, Link doesn't do anything, then you can recover from this by just throwing the bomb. Uh, once again, uh, just slightly pushing down the L uh, trigger to get out of the free cam. Go into first person and redo, like, taking out the bomb and swinging the camera around all over again. So you want to err on the side of being early, because then you can just reattempt uh, this part of the skip over and over again. All right, so let's say that you accidentally miss the frame uh, where we're trying to buffer to for the B press. The next frame that works uh, is going to be this one right here. Um, so if we save state here and then um, I go into uh, frame advance and we unpause, uh, you can notice that like uh, Actually, I'm not sure what my visual cue here is. I just know that it works. I know that on the previous frame, before this one, there's like a giant line on the right side of the screen that's easy to see, but obviously that's not here. I don't know. Look for the pole to be in line with the letters here or something. <laughs> this, this looks like it'll probably work. But basically, every 60 frames, uh, this animation cycles, so you have an opportunity to do this clip like every 60 frames. Uh, which is cool, because it gives you multiple chances if you do happen to miss the first pause, or the first frame that you want to buffer to. So just like the last one, uh, you know, if you, uh, if we unpause and then press the B button, that was a frame late. That was also a frame late. That was also a frame late. There we go, okay. So, yeah. Uh, that's... A somewhat janky setup on how to do barrier skip like this. Uh, I'm hoping that I explained at least as much of the nuance as is necessary to this. Because um, it is quite a weird setup, but yeah, should make any percent for this game faster. And this is good because it, uh, sh it should work on all regions of the game. Because uh, the previous method with actor unloading only worked on the Japanese version. Uh, this should work on every single version of the game. But uh, yeah, um, see ya. Thanks for watching.